Hello guys, welcome to this review of the V2 Panigale. So I had this bike for about a year now, um, ridden a couple of thousand kilometers on it. And I wanted you guys to see my opinion on this bike, um, since I've had it for a year now and I probably know a little bit more than the normal journalists, uh, which go to those uh, launch events. And uh, yeah stick around and uh, let me tell you about uh, my bike so before we go and ride i just wanted to mention the modifications i've done to this bike so we'll start at the front uh, i have a evo tech radiator guard to protect from stones and uh, stuff getting into the um, radiator so also we have um, nrc uh, blinkers uh, which uh, is also a mirror delete so installed some crg arrow mirrors for that race bike look also have a uh, ducati performance uh, windscreen uh, also a ducati spacer kit which is inside the throttle so we don't get that much uh, slack in the throttle further we have uh, yeah, a gopro mount for filming on track uh, also uh, deleted uh, those um, reflectors on the brake discs which are normally here further we have a uh, Ducati performance tank pad uh, which protects from scratches you must have that on this bike because this paint uh, scratches up like really easily so I must have also some uh, Tank grips for better uh, grip on sporty riding and on track days. Further, we have a uh, race seat cover from Ducati Performance. I must say, I, this is a must on the Panigale. You just have to have that uh, race bike look. It looks so aggressive. Really cool mod, actually. Also, we have uh, the NRC uh, Fender Eliminator. Uh, with those uh, LED blinkers uh, which look uh, really nice I can show you this it's a, it's a really clean look so uh, really happy with those and this is how it looks from the front further we have the uh, Duca bike clutch cover uh, which look really really nice it kind of makes the whole bike pop and is a really good looking thing. Um, definitely a uh, really nice detail to have on your uh, Ducati. For now, I don't have any exhaust. Um, I have ordered the Acura slip-on. It just delayed from Ducati, so uh, probably have it within a month or so. Before we go riding, I'll tell you guys more about uh, the specifications on this bike. So uh, let's start with the engine. This engine is a 955cc. Uh, it produces uh, 155 of a brake horsepower. Uh, it also have um, 104 newton meters. It's a uh, pretty powerful motorcycle. Further, the bike is uh, only 176 kilograms um, dry. So it's a lightweight, this one. It has Brembo M4 brakes. Further, it has uh, Showa fully adjustable uh, forks for both rebound and compound. Uh, really great for track riding. Also, Showa on the back. Uh, it's not Olin's, which a lot of people think because it's uh, the same color, but uh, yeah, just uh, Ducati trying to fool you, I guess. So uh, we'll look on the menus. So we have a gear indicator, uh, heat, um, kilometers, trip, fuel, um, RPMs, and all the Ducati electronic settings on the right side. So engine braking control, Ducati quick shift, Ducati traction control, ABS, and Ducati wheelie control as well. It has all the same electronic package as the V4 Panigale. So here in the uh, settings, um, you can choose between three riding modes. So you can have uh, the race mode, sport mode, and street. 
um, you can also adjust those uh, manually so if you want to do some uh, other settings you can uh, do that I mainly ride in sport mode because I find the troll response the best race is a little aggressive on the street uh, and street mode is just too slow for my test so then guys let's hop on the bike and I'll tell you more about it yeah let's go so let's start this review uh, with uh, the positive sides on this bike um, so firstly uh, let's talk about the engine so the engine is a classic sport bike engine uh, but since this is a uh, v-twin um, you get that uh, grunt uh, which you get from uh, a lot of naked bikes because it has uh, low down torque uh, 104 newton meters um, but it's kind of tuned to be more powerful up uh, in the revs so it starts to make a lot of power around 7000 rpm because it's uh, tuned for uh, sporty and truck riding uh, but you can really feel that it has some down grunt compared to like uh, the R6 and the uh, Daytona and stuff this has so much more torque down low so it's uh, much nicer to ride in uh, the low RPMs because you have uh, some power there but uh, the real power is up in the revs it's uh, it's like a kick at uh, around seven eight thousand rpm where you really get that push uh, and it's uh, all it's insane from like eight thousand all the way up to uh, twelve thousand which is the red line uh, so this engine is actually much more usable in town than I would thought it will be I thought it would be really jerky and unrideable um, and that you have to do a lot of work with the clutch and stuff but actually that's not the case it's really smooth for a Ducati um, which further bring me to the quick shifter um, the quick shifter on this bike is actually really good and uh, uh, that was kind of a shock to me when I first rode this bike because uh, and uh, I thought like Ducatis were really jerky and kind of unrideable uh, in those low speed situations uh, but th that's not the case with the modern Ducatis like the V4s and the V2s they have uh, tuned the bikes to be more rideable and the quick shifters are so smooth it's like better uh, you can quick shift in any speed as long as you go off and off the gas and it's work it works like charm it's uh, really nice this and the v4 are like the best quick shifters i have ever used on the motorcycle and further we can talk a little about the chassis uh it's a sport bike it's uh it's stiff it's uh tool it's supposed to be ridden in twisties and on track like we are uh, here right now um and it's uh uh, kind of a chill sport bike compared to like uh, those hardcore sport bikes like the R1 and uh, uh, other 1000 cc's it's not as aggressive it's kind of made more for street use and more for the daily stuff so the forks and the brakes are a little softer so that it's better to use in the daily stuff so the forks are not so stiff uh, and the brakes are kind of um, uh, smooth in the beginning and then they bite they have not that initial uh, strong bite like you have on um, the style limas or the m50s it's kind of uh, slowly getting there and then it really bites and that makes it kind of softer and easier to live with in the daily stuff I actually do prefer that kind of brake feeling because if I have that uh, really strong bite from the beginning I tend to brake way too much and uh, I get that kind of uh, jerky riding style so I actually prefer the brakes on this bike 
So further, uh, I will talk about the riding position on this bike. Everyone who wants to buy a sport bike will always compromise in comfort. You can't really get around that problem. It's it's just there. It's just the sport bike lifestyle, I guess. But the V2 Panigale is less uh, aggressive uh, compared to the competition. So you have uh, wider bars. It's not uh, angled uh, so aggressively as like the R6 and the other 600s. So you can actually enjoy riding this on the road without being too uncomfortable. And it's not comfortable, let's say, but it's uh, good enough for like, I've, I've done like five hour rides on this bike sometimes and it's fine as long as you ride on twisties or uh, on the highway and not in town and stuff. Uh, it's not really bad at all, so uh, it's a usable sport bike for what it is. Uh, further also the seat is uh, actually kind of soft and it's not hard um, and actually the comfort seat uh, from Ducati which you can buy is actually stiffer than the stock seat so don't buy the <laughs> comfort seat if you uh, get this bike you will just waste your money and also this bike has like a, such a good feeling when you are in the turns uh, because you are over the bars and you are in a aggressive riding position that gives the bike a really good feedback on the chassis so you feel in control when riding hard in corners and it feels really good when you ride it hard and I think that is um, uh, because of both the engine and how it's tuned and uh, also the feedback in the chassis so further we'll talk about uh, the character on this bike. Come on, it's a Ducati. Uh, it's full of character. Uh, it shakes, it rumbles. Uh, it sounds good. Uh, actually sounds good for a stock motorcycle. Which is rare in these days. Um, so it's like 97 decibels on a track noise testing so you can do uh, track days on this bike with the stock exhaust um, and further on the character it's like when you ride this bike around it's like everyone's eyes is on you it's a red Ducati it's like eye candy for people um, and people come up to you people ask you about it when you're at riding meets everyone uh, looks at you and wants to chat with you. It's like If you really want attention, <laughs> this is definitely uh, the bug to get um, And actually I think um, The V2 is a prettier design uh, Than the V4 Panigale Because this bike is slimmer. It has uh, rounder lines uh, less like uh, angular lines and also you don't have the wings which I prefer because I think uh, just wings are overkill uh, unless you do like MotoGP riding um, and it's all around a slimmer and rounder design which makes it look better in my opinion That right there is what this bike is made for, corners. You're just chasing corners when you ride this thing. So now let's talk about the negatives on this bike. Unfortunately, uh, there's a lot of negatives uh, with owning sport bikes. And uh, Panigales in particular, because they are hot. They are really hot. Both uh, looking and uh, riding. <laughs> Uh, so they tend to make a lot of heat 
because the uh, exhaust pipe is under the seat so you will feel that heat uh, at your seat. Uh, fortunately you can buy a exhaust heat cover from uh, Ducati Spacers. Uh, you can also buy uh, heat shields uh, for the uh, engine covers which your legs are sitting around and also produce a lot of heat. It's actually worse than the um, heat from the seat. Uh, the heat on your legs is actually the worst. Uh, I guess you heard this in every Panigal review. It's hot and you can't get any way around it really. Uh, you can do the heat shields and uh, buy a full exhaust and tune it and it will cool uh, a lot. But it's still hot. So fortunately I live in Norway. It's not really a hot place to ride. Uh, in the summer it's like in the 20s, sometimes 30. but. Uh, um, not much more but if I lived in like yeah uh, South Europe uh, Miami or some hot place I would really test ride this before I would buy it because uh, it can be a big problem uh, especially when you do like uh, commuting and stuff and that uh, brings me further to the practicality on this bike to keep it simple uh, it's not practical uh, one because of the riding position which is a uh, pain in the ass when riding in town okay it's not as bad as other sport bikes and if you do ride above 60 kilometers an hour you are good really uh, but when you do like stop and go traffic, uh, lane splitting, you will feel a pain in your back. And so I hate riding this bike in the city uh, and uh, commuting in traffic. Uh, it's a nightmare. It gets both hot and uh, you get pain in your body. So not a commuter bike. Uh, further uh, practicality when it comes to like longer rides. You can do road trips on this but uh, you have really not a lot of space uh, on this bike. Um, this back seat is really small. Uh, I don't have the back seat on though, I have the race seat cover. But if you have uh, the back seat on, uh, you can strap like a Kruega 20 liters uh, soft bag and uh, do like a weekend trip or something. But uh, any longer than that I wouldn't do on this bike and also the running position is kind of tough for long rides so um, not really a uh, good bike for touring. Also a uh, negative on this bike is that it does not have a fuel gauge. It's like you buy a bike for like so much money <laughs> and they can't even fit a uh, freaking fuel gauge on it. It's like, come on Ducati, do better. Uh, the funny thing is like the Hyper Motard and the Monster 950, they have the same screen as this bike, uh, the same size and they have the fuel gauge. So why this bike does not have the fuel gauge is a mystery. But uh, I found out that the fuel uh, lamp com comes on when it's about six liters left in the tank so you have about 100 kilometers or 60 miles of range when the uh, fuel lamp uh, comes on so it's not really a big problem but uh, when you buy a, such a premium motorcycle you should get a fuel gauge and now let's talk about some problems I have faced when um, owning this bike so uh, not that really many problems uh, so far but uh, this bike is hard to start uh, when it's warm so let, let's say I park this bike for yeah 10 plus minutes and uh, it doesn't really cool down uh, completely um, then it's hard to start so it takes like 30 seconds and they have to give it some gas uh, uh, for it to start which is kind of a pain in the butt when you <laughs> uh, paid so much money for a motorcycle uh, and it doesn't even start easily 
Um, so I have complained to Ducati about this. Uh, they changed some sensor during the winter. Uh, the problem is still there. So now they have uh, looked further into this. So they probably will change the ECU on this bike. And uh, hopefully that uh, fixes this uh, problem. Uh, other issue I have um, experienced was that the throttle uh, was lagging. So when I went off the gas, it didn't engine brake. It didn't. It just uh, hold the same throttle level. It was basically riding by itself. It was really sketchy. But uh, actually, it just disappeared by itself. I don't know why it did that. But uh, yeah, it stopped. So that's good. So uh, we haven't mentioned yet how this bike is on the highway. Uh, and actually, it is really comfortable because you get uh, a lot of wind and uh, that makes it more comfortable on your back and you are quite protected from the wind when you uh, ride a sport bike on the highway so um, it's actually better to ride this bike than the most naked bikes uh, on the highway because they uh, tend to have a lot of wind and uh, yeah uh, just feel so comfortable to ride those on the highway so um, definitely a sport bike uh, perk to ride on the highway the last thing I'll answer for you guys is who is this bike for really this bike is for the person who does a lot of sporty riding if you do um, riding in the twisties on Sundays and if you like to ride fast that's when you're gonna enjoy this bike um, and if you do the occasional track day it's perfect that's my kind of riding style I ride fast I do twisties uh, a lot and I do the occasional track day so this bike is good for my riding style so this bike is not for commuting and for town riding uh, if you mostly do town riding uh, I will not buy this bike get the Street Fighter V2 so much better uh, when you have that upright sitting position and uh, less heat so if you guys have any questions about this bike uh, just ask in the comments or uh, send me a DM on my Instagram which you can find uh, down below um, and yeah that was my review on this bike uh, I love this bike I won't sell this bike uh, uh, yet I will ride this and enjoy this um, so if you want to see more Panigale V2 videos uh, make sure to subscribe to my channel I also do a lot of uh, test rides and reviews of other bikes so stay tuned for that as well and until then like subscribe and comment and I'll see you guys in the next one bye